How's it going everybody? My name is Cameron White and welcome back to your favorite monthly horoscope. This time for March of 2024, Sagittarius Sun and Rising. Thank you guys so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys and we have a lot to kind of talk about so we're just going to go ahead and jump straight into the horoscope. We are starting March off with Venus ingressing into Taurus on the 4th and this is some pretty exciting news because of course Venus is the planet of love, value, money. She wants to bring things together. She wants you to indulge in all of your senses and enjoy the finer things in life. And as Venus does go into Taurus, she's going into her home sign, her domicile. And this basically just means Venus has access to all the resources and the tools that she needs to do her job, and that is to make things better. Now, with Venus going into Taurus, this is going to be pretty enjoyable, but it is going to be entering your sixth house. Now, of course, the sixth house is all about your work, your routine, uh, your health, uh, what you're kind of doing every single day. If you're employed, this is going to be like, you know, that not necessarily because, uh, well, the 10th house and the sixth house are both working houses. Like the 10th house is your career and the sixth house is like what you do every single day, like in the context of that career. And so as Venus goes into your sixth house, this is where you can probably see a little bit more enjoyment with your day-to-day -day activities, maybe finding some more leisure time to squeeze into your schedule as well with Venus going into Taurus, this is going to be a good time to maybe start any diets, or I don't want to say diet, but maybe just focus a little bit better on your health. Take better care of your body. Take better care of your nutrition. As Venus is going through your sixth house, this is just going to be an enjoyable time uh, in the context of your work, your habits, uh, your day-to-day -day schedule. So make the most of it, and uh, with Venus and Taurus, get a little bit healthier. See if you can focus on health stuff. See if you can squeeze in some more leisure and some more luxury time for yourself. But also on March 4th is when we're going to have Mercury retrogress back in into Aquarius. Now, as Mercury has been retrograding in your fourth house, there's probably been some miscommunications around your family, maybe your parents, maybe some mishaps or some uh, unclarity around your living situation and your home life. And now as Mercury is still retrograde but goes back into Aquarius, this is where we can kind of put a better mindset onto things and start thinking about things logically, rationally. Because while Mercury was in Pisces, it could have been kind of confusing to get all of our ideas or everything that we want to say out there. Uh, as Mercury goes back into Aquarius, this is where we can kind of see things through a different perspective that might give us a little bit more insight as to what Mercury's retrograde in Pisces is kind of bringing to you. Now, just a few days later after that, on March 9th, that is when we're going to be having the full moon in Virgo. Now, as the sun's been in Pisces, transiting your fourth house, this has been illuminating and bringing more awareness to around matters revolving around your family life, your home life, your living situation. This is bringing some light there. The sun's in Pisces right now, which is a mutable sign, so it's a little bit more open to change, uh, open to adapting into new environments. And as the sun's been through your fourth house, this is kind of just, you know, illuminating this area. But as this full moon in Virgo happens, it's going to be happening in your 10th house of your career, of your public vocation, of how people see you. And as this full moon happens uh, in your 10th house, this is going to be a good time to, you know, write down your to-do list, go over your checklist of what needs to get done, what needs to get tended to in the context of your career, of your work. Um, this full moon in Virgo is just going to be illuminating uh, a different side and reflecting a different side of, you know, what's kind of going on in your living situation is going to reflect into some growth somewhere in your career. So this full moon in Virgo is going to be exciting if you're looking forward to better work stuff. However, also on March 9th is when we're going to also have Mercury finally stationed direct. Now, as Mercury's been retrograde in Pisces, again, bringing confusion around this living situation thing, as Mercury goes direct in your third house, this might be kind of like one of those moments of clarities. The third house is all about our, you know, the way that we write, the way that we speak. You know, yes, it's kind of mercurial in that sense. However, the third house is also about short distance travel, uh, siblings, uh, relatives, uh, neighbors, things in your uh, close proximity. And something that Dane Rudger says in his book uh, on the houses is, is how the first house is who you are, the second house is what you have, third house is how you use it. And so as Mercury kind of goes direct in your third house, this might be a good time to be a little bit more clear on what you are communicating and be a little bit more focused on what you're doing when it comes to mercurial things. What are you signing contracts for? Are you looking at the fine print? How can you see you know, what you signed up for in a different perspective? And this also might be a good time to reach out to siblings for some help uh, if that kind of helps the situation a little bit. But as Mercury does go direct in Aquarius, this is where we can kind of have a refreshed mindset and be able to see things a little bit more rationally instead of kind of going in with Mercury Pisces kind of being confused about the whole situation. But then just a few days later, after Mercury stations direct in Aquarius, we have Mercury ingressing into Pisces. 
Now, Mercury's still in shadow at this point, so we're still gonna be going over the stuff that Mercury retrograde brought to us, but this time, we're not gonna make assumptions about things. You know, uh, Mercury wants to be able to deliver a message uh, on paper and black and white where it's super clear and legible. Mercury and Pisces kind of, you know, writes down the note on their hand on a highlighter and by the time they get to their destination, all of that writing is all smeared and they just kind of have to go off the top of their head with what they can remember. And that's not a bad thing. That just means Mercury just doesn't have the tools or access to the resources it would be more comfortable with. Um, but what this does mean, you know, certain messages are delivered better when they're on, when they're in paper, when they're black and white, and certain messages are delivered better when they are off the cuff, when they are more, you know, imaginative, when they are more creative. And as Mercury goes into Pisces, again, this is where I think it's going to be time to focus on, you know, communicating best with those efforts, you know, where, you know, communicating where we can with Im uh, imagery, where we can with visualization. And as Mercury's in Pisces, you know, this is kind of about being open to interpretation. Not anything's really defined with Mercury in Pisces. So be a little bit more loose with it. Go a little bit more with the flow and don't, you know, make assumptions based off one thing that one person said because that's what Mercury in Pisces can trick you into doing. And of course, as Mercury goes back into your fourth house, this is bringing this into the context of your family life, your home life, your living situation, how and where you center yourself. And so as Mercury goes through this area, this is gonna be a time to be a little bit more creative and imaginative with your living situation. Uh, the mercurial things like, you know, how do you organize your stuff? What is written on the walls and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But then as we move forward on March 20th, this is when we're gonna be having the sun ingress into Aries. And now as the sun does move into Aries and we have the equinox, this is when the sun goes into its sign of exaltation. Now, uh, the sun likes to be in Aries and it's, it's exaltation because uh, the sun is gets, getting hotter, days are getting longer, it's getting brighter. So the sun really likes to be in Aries. It's really kind of initiating that change here on Earth on a seasonal level. Now, as the sun does go into Aries, it's gonna be going into your fifth house, which the sun is gonna be illuminating and bringing more awareness to love interest, romance, sex, children. If you're an artist or a creative, the sun transiting your fifth house is also gonna bring some light and attention to the creative and artistic part of you. So as the sun goes through your fifth house, this is, again, like I'm kind of going off the list here and we're looking pretty good for March. It's looking pretty, uh, not too bad as the sun goes through your fifth house. But then we get to March 21st, the next day, and this is when the big, big thing of March is happening, and that is Saturn ingressing into Aquarius. Now, let me scoot up a little bit. There's a lot to talk about here because, um, so Saturn is going to be in Aquarius from March 21st to July 1st where after July 1st, it will retrograde back into Capricorn and it'll stay there for a few months. Then at the end of the year, Saturn will move back into Aquarius and that's where it'll be for the next three years. So this little three month window opportunity is gonna be kind of the time where we get a sneak preview and we get some insight into what the next three years are gonna look like. Now, Saturn is the planet of limitations, of walls, barriers, hard nose. Um, Saturn on the flip side is also about responsibility, being more mature, being more disciplined, um, you know, being more committed, being more responsible. And as Saturn's been in your second house now for the past three years, there's been this theme, uh, all of that has been kind of focused on your money, on your finances, on your resources and the possessions that you own. Now, as Saturn was in Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn was kind of, and I did a whole video about, about this, but Saturn in Capricorn is kind of like, doing things in the most cheap and the most efficient way. How do we just get it done? It's kind of like that corporate mindset that you can put on things. Saturn in Aquarius is more about going like, hey, what's gonna work for both me and every other party involved? What makes more sense to do? What is the, you know, the most rational thing to do? While it may not be the cheapest or the most efficient, what's gonna be the best way for this to work with all parties involved? Now, as Saturn moves from your second house of money, finances, resources, Saturn's gonna be going to your third house. So I like to kind of call this like, you're gonna get a little bit of a break from Saturn in a sense, because the third house rules a lot of different things. Third house rules, you know, teaching and speaking uh, on like a elementary level, our writing style. Um, the third house rules short distance travel. The third house rules our local environment, like our neighbors. It also rules siblings and aunts and uncles. Uh, but something that, and you know, just like I talked about earlier, the third house is, you know, how you utilize yourself and the things that you have. And as Saturn goes into Aquarius, this is going to be the time about kind of finding where you can best put the tools that you have and the skills and abilities you have best to use. 
And if Saturn goes into Aquarius, it's gonna be kind of a weird thing because it's not like Saturn in your second house where it's like, yep, broke, uh, or Saturn, you know, or it's kind of like, I don't have the money, or, you know, I don't have this. Saturn was really, you know, when it's focused on the second house, it's focused on money, and it's pretty, you know, clear. Um, on the third house, it's gonna look a lot of different ways. So be open to what that can look like. Um, I would definitely investigate a little bit more of the third house so you can get a better idea of what it's gonna look like for you and your chart. Look to the ruler of your third house, find Saturn in your chart, because that's gonna also bring up some topics about this. But yeah, Saturn moves into Aquarius on March 21st, that's the big thing. But then the next day, we also have Mars conjoining Pluto in Capricorn. And I usually don't talk about Pluto that much, or let alone you know aspects to Pluto, but I wanted to bring this up because Mars Mars Pluto brings up um, power struggles oftentimes. And Mars conjoining Pluto is kind of like you might be working so hard that you like your body gives out, you need to take a break. Or Mars conjoining Pluto is kind of like facing that authority and facing, you know, breaking through that wall that can kind of hold you back. And as this is going on in your second house, Mars has been in your second house for a while now, so you're kind of burning through money, probably spending a little bit more money at this time, which can be a little bit more, which can be uncomfortable. When Mars conjoins Pluto, this might bring that into light and a lot of fears might come out then. And this isn't anything too much to worry about, but it is going to come up during this time. So just be aware after Saturn moves into Aquarius, there might be some more fears about this Capricorn stuff that we're gonna be dealing with. But then the next day on March 23rd, that's when we have the new moon in Aries. Now, again, the sun's in Aries now, focused on fifth house things. And now this new moon, of course, our new moons are times to you know, reset your energy, kind of get yourself leveled out a little bit, you know, be clear a little bit more on your intentions. And as this new moon happens in your fifth house, we're talking about love and romance, kind of like, you know, clearing your palate out and to where you can get, you know, experience new flavors and new tastes there. Clear, you know, having this new moon in fifth house, if you're wanting to do more art or music or any creative venture, this is gonna be a good time to really set your intentions clear with that. Um, this new moon is looking pretty exciting, but it's gonna be more towards the gear of, art, music, creativity, love interests as well, and you know, kind of figuring out what do you need and what do you want, and going after what you want. But then we get to uh, the end of the month, and on March 30th, that's when we're gonna be having Mars ingress into Aquarius. Now, um, just for a little bit of context, Mars is gonna enter Aquarius and conjoin Saturn at zero degrees. Well, at the end of the year, when Saturn goes back into Aquarius, Jupiter is gonna ingress into Aquarius and conjoin Saturn at zero degrees. So an event that happens here at the end of March when Mars ingresses into Aquarius might come up later in a pretty big way at the end of this year. So be on the lookout for that. However, as Mars moves from your second house into your third house, Mars you know, heats things up, severs, cuts, it brings conflicts and fights, but it kind of shows where our energy is kind of focused. It moves from your second house of your money and your resources to the third house. So you might be dealing with conflicts, fights, arguments, as well as you know, more energized, more charged up. Uh, revolving topics around your siblings, around your neighbors, around uh, short distance travel. Um, kind of, uh, you know, annoying type little things, but nothing super crazy or in your face. But as Mars conjoins Saturn as it goes into Aquarius, this is about kind of, you know, handling the situation, putting a stop to where the problems are and addressing that in an authoritative way. And the thing is too, with Mars and Aquarius, like Mars and Capricorn is all about, you know, doing the best job that it can work, putting in an 80 hour shift, you know, working hard, you know, brings meaning. But Mars in Aquarius is all about doing things that work better for Mars. And Mars in Aquarius can deal with being an outsider or being a little bit alienated, but it is about doing, like Mars in Aquarius is gonna do what's best for Mars in Aquarius, not what's best for everyone else or what's you know uh, a way that people want Mars to do things. Mars in Aquarius is gonna do its own thing. So maybe find a creative you know, way to address these problems that Saturn and Mars are gonna both represent here at the end of the month. And that's what I got for you guys. Uh, there was a few things I didn't really go over in this horoscope. I wanted to focus on mostly the main events for this month. Um, that's kind of like my new thing that I wanna be doing in these monthly horoscopes. Let me know what you guys think. As well, uh, if you have any personal uh, planets that are gonna be really affected by these transits, please let me know in the comments below what you think is gonna happen. And yeah, let me know if you guys have any goals, what you want March to look like for you guys. See, let me know what you guys are gonna be doing with March uh, in the comments below, and I'd love to chat with you guys about that. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for being here, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I love and appreciate every single one of you guys, and I'll be seeing you next month.